It's the 21st of October, which means it's time to review Rosa. When Doctor Who returned in 2005, it was decided that as well as having science fiction stories and present day stories, the series would return to having historical episodes. And those historical episodes quite often feature a major historical figure. Now, in the past, we've generally had artists or world leaders as these historical figures, but Rosa gives us one of the pioneers of the American Civil Rights Movement, Rosa Parks, with also cameos from Martin Luther King and Fred Gray. Sometimes they're an out-and-out comedy like The Unicorn and the Wasp, but even without that, there's often a sort of comedic undercurrent to them. If you look at, say, Tooth and Claw, you've got the Doctor and Rose kind of making fun of Queen Victoria in there. So, when this episode was announced, I felt a bit of trepidation in dealing with a topic like the American Civil Rights Movement in the context of Doctor Who. And I think this episode does a great job. What I was concerned about going into this episode was how the story would marry the historical fact of the civil rights movement with Doctor Who's science fiction element. We see an incident in the 40s where Rosa gets on the bus, the bus driver tells her to use the back door, she gets off to obey his instructions and he drives off without her. So we have set up what this world is like and you know, describing this world, this is our world, and as Ryan and Yaz describe later in the episode, while things may have gotten better, these prejudices still exist, and they still affect the lives of people of colour. We then get the science fiction element with the Doctor saying there are Artron energy signatures that shouldn't be here, and so that's the reason that the Doctor and her friends don't just take off again. They've made 14 landings since leaving Desolation last week. And so they leave the TARDIS and encounter the story. They discover the truth about racism in Montgomery, Alabama in 1955, when Ryan gets struck across the face for trying to give a white woman back her glove. And the direction of that moment, the slow motion, the look on Tosin Cole's face, I, I keep coming back to praising his acting, but I think he is an amazingly good, at times very subtle actor, because his character can be quite stoical. So when his facial expression changes in even the smallest way, you notice, and he conveys a wealth of emotion in that scene, as does Graham, as does Yaz, as does the Doctor, who, it seems, suddenly realises the danger of the situation they're in when that moment happens. It hasn't occurred to her before now to warn Ryan and Yaz that this may be a place that isn't too safe for them. At the heart of this story is Vinette Robinson's amazing performance as Rosa Parks. We've seen Vinette in Doctor Who before. She was in 42, which is Chris Chibnall's first Doctor Who episode. And I didn't even realise that until after I had seen the episode. The moment when the gang meets Rosa Parks, we move from the drama of that moment into a bit of comedy as our heroes geek out <laughs> a bit meeting Rosa Parks, which she finds very strange. But that's immediately then undercut, and we're brought back to the situation with Rosa telling us about Emmett Till, who is a young man who was, you know, drowned for talking to a white woman in Mississippi. You know, it's just... Uh. The story balances moments of humour with the with these historically accurate but really challenging and uncomfortable moments of racism. You know, we get the scene in the restaurant where they're kicked out, and then we come to the hotel where Ryan and Yaz have to climb in through the window, and then they have to climb out again when that cop arrives. And that scene with, with the cop, it's scary, you know? Because if he finds Ryan and Yaz... <sighs> I mean, it's left up to the viewer's imagination what, what, what might happen, but it's not at all pleasant. And I think it's a really important part of the Doctor's character here that 
she doesn't go off on a monologue about how what the Montgomery police are doing is morally wrong, which it is, but instead she uses language to stand up for the concept of equality. There's no one here that doesn't have a right to be here is an incredibly clever statement, and I really love it. It doesn't change the reality of the fact, though, that Ryan and Yaz are sitting out behind the bins, and we, we go to that conversation, and that's really powerful as well. Even there, we get a bit of comedy with Graham putting his hand around the Doctor and the whole Steve Jobs bit, and it, it's rising and falling action. If everything in the story was building tension, and there was no release, well, either the story would become utterly unwatchable because we were so tense in watching it, or the tension would become meaningless, and that's why we need this release happening as well. Now, as well as the villain basically being institutionalised racism, we've got that in human form as well in the character of Crasco. Now, he is a mass murderer from the future who has come back specifically to stop the civil rights movement. And the implication then is that segregation will continue, possibly even spread around the world and out into the universe. I remember when Josh Bowman was cast, there was a lot of talk about, you know, he's a very handsome actor. Whereas Crasco, he's an attractive young man, when he does speak, he's very well spoken. He is a respectable face of racism. And that's something we've been seeing in racism in the world in the last few years. People not necessarily screaming and shouting, but speaking in very reasonable voices. And again, when he's talking to the doctor about his plan, there's no screaming, there's no ranting, there's no raving. He just describes it very dispassionately, you know, as if what he's doing is the most reasonable thing in the world. And that gives Jodie Whittaker a very good villain to push against. She destroys his gear and then goads him into attacking her, knowing that he cannot do her permanent harm. Again, it's about giving the villain a choice, as she does with Sim Shah, but it's also making clear that she is taking control of this situation. I absolutely love that scene between the two of them in the warehouse when she realises what he's up to. She started working on solving it, but goes along to, one, neutralise the threat because she gets rid of his gear, takes his weapon and destroys his vortex manipulator, but gives him a chance to make it right. It, you know, it could be said this could be a situation where the ends justify the means and the Doctor could send him back in time like Ryan does later. But the Doctor has always had this streak of giving people a chance to be better, even at the detriment of the Doctor themselves. A lot of the rest of the episode revolves around a sort of Mission Impossible style execution of the Doctor's plan. Everyone gets little bits to do, and there's the added complication of Crasco's interference. So it's not just a matter of the Doctor and her friends ensuring that history runs on its course. They have to correct the interference from Crasco. And so we get the sort of lottery win trick that the Doctor's pulled once or twice before. We get Graham hotwiring a bus. Bit of dodgy ADR there. We get Ryan encouraging people to wait for the bus and tear down the notices from Crasco, which gives us another moment to demonstrate the entrenched racist attitudes of the time and place. I'm just going to mention there's a little cameo from Morgan Deer, who appeared in Delta and the Bannermen, and I like to think that this character is his dad from, from, that, from that story. We're sending Ryan out into danger again. He's already been threatened. And I thought, well, Ryan could surely hotwire a bus with his mechanics course. But then I thought, OK, but then you have to send Graham out there and you need speed. And Ryan and Yaz are the two fittest characters for that, you know. So it is still an appropriate use of each of the characters. I love the scenes with Yaz and Rosa uh, talking about the future 
and Rosa doesn't even realise they're talking about the future. Something I think is so good about this story is that there isn't the moment from Vincent and the Doctor or the Shakespeare Code where the Doctor tells Rosa how important she is for the future. It's kind of hinted at when Ryan has coffee with Rosa and Dr. King. Rosa, I think, suspects that there is something unusual about them. But again, that is such a wonderfully powerful scene and Ryan paying tribute to Dr. King on behalf of Grace is a beautiful moment. And we get the comedy straight afterwards. Uh, sorry, Dr. King. Yes, Rosa Parks. And the look on Toast and Cole's face is, I didn't expect to be saying this this morning. <sighs> and then, oh, and then we get that scene on the bus, which is horrible. And it's heartbreaking. I kind of wish there was a bit more rallying against it from the companion characters, but we do get Graham saying, I don't want to do this. And I suppose it's appropriate to be coming from Graham because his standing is the reason Rosa gets arrested. And given you know, the respect he has for Grace and Ryan, it, it's, it, it is personal to him being involved in this. And, of course, another brilliant performance from Bradley Walsh, who can do no wrong. I think it's mollified slightly by the fact that when Rosa is being walked away, she notices Ryan and they share a little moment there. Again, it's the ambiguity of how much does Rosa understand of who these four people are. It's a deeply powerful story. And I have to say, it's uncomfortable for me to watch knowing that had I been living in that era, you know, had I been born in Montgomery in 1925, I could have the same attitudes as James Blake, you know? Racism is learned. And I've been very fortunate that it is not something I learned. It is not a value that was instilled into me. And when Ryan and Yaz are talking about how it still exists, it is still being instilled in other people. I have no hesitation in giving this story 10 out of 10. It can be hard to watch, but it's hard to watch because this is such an important moment in history, movement in history, and people died because of this. And this story doesn't skirt around that either. Mallory Blackman and Chris Chibnall do an excellent job in writing and presenting a story about such a serious issue and an important moment in history and something that is still relevant today, but also bringing levity and humour into it and demonstrating the joys that Rosa does have in life, despite living in this terrible world, but also makes a Doctor Who story out of it and gives us a credible villain who could just as easily have been someone from the time period who just happened to find this technology or even just happened to find out information of what would happen in the future. I mean, that's the thing. Crasco's plans don't actually revolve around his technology because he's still able to try and enact them even with the technology gone. My current rankings for this season, Rosa coming in first at the moment, The Woman Who Fells Worth coming in second, and The Ghost Monument coming third. Uh, what did you think of this story? I'd be really interested to read your reviews in the comments, unless you agree with Crasco, in which case I want you to stop watching me. No, I'm serious. If you agree with Crasco, Stop watching. Stop watching Doctor Who. Why are you watching Doctor Who if you think racism is a good idea? And there are people who do, and I don't understand it. 
I'll be back tomorrow with some more Say Something Nice, and I'll be back next week with a review of Arachnids in the UK. Until then, thank you very much for watching.